Are you out of the home now? No. I sent a notice to the sheriff that he has his oath is that to protect and serve me. And I would be very unhappy and disappointed if he puts me out of my home. Agent Starr, yes. We were told it's being dismissed. We get there, review the file. There's a dismissal, right? But it doesn't say whether or not it's w with prejudice. So all she does, she writes a, a request for clarification. She says, is it, is it with prejudice or not? Well, as a result of this, allegedly, then she's now reopened the entire case. And it doesn't make any sense. You know, I've I practiced for about eight, nine years. And I, I'm like, how does that reopen the whole case? You just want a clarification. So yeah, she's still doing this tightrope dance again every day. She has no security. You know, she's raised a family. She's done all these things. She's in the twilight of her years. And here she is, strung out in this court system. It's not cool. No, it's not cool at all. And the panel was listening assiduously. They know it's not cool. Uh, there's State Rep. Comerford. Uh, he s knows it stinks. Uh, you remember State Rep. Comerford. He was in a previous movie with Marie Miller before on this whole case. Then you had State Rep. Sorg. He wants to know what the hell is going on, too. Everybody does. Uh, look out in the crowd there. It's Tom Fahey from the Union Leader. He's taking notes. Everybody knows that uh, it's time for a change. But my bet was, would be that she doesn't show up and say a word. I see. Yeah, this whole thing is very troubling to me because as a former title insurance producer uh, and as a former state attorney, uh, I find it repugnant that there is a standing order for them to produce an original of the note and mortgage three years back. And they still haven't done that. No, I, I find it repugnant as well. That's why we're working on this with the redress committee. And we'll be taking the appropriate action. And if that uh, calls for impeachment, then that's uh, something we'll have to look at, too. Indeed. Well, we're going to head back up, folks, not having original wedding note or mortgage or anything like that to indicate that they are truly holder due course and entitled to foreclose. Now, all throughout the country, the trend that I've been seeing, states all over the country, we have uh, attorneys general in Arizona, we've got uh, U.S. trustees, bankruptcy trustees in a number of states, and uh, other attorneys general are coming out, and judges in New York, all over the place, are holding that as a, as a basic tenet of American jurisprudence, you have to have standing, some iota of standing to put somebody out of their home. But here in New Hampshire, I've seen just the opposite, all right? I've seen, uh, and I'll name names. Uh, Judge Wiggling in this instance, okay? I've got the Judge Diane Nicolosi in another case, in which some, someone is here on today, too, where I wrote her specifically. I attended their trials, the, their, their pre, not trials, but their hearings. And I said, look, guys, I, I've read the files. I haven't seen original anything yet. And moreover, in some of these cases, in the Diane Nicolosi case, I saw documents by a robo-signer by the name of uh, Green, Linda Green, who was featured on 60 Minutes as part of the, the next housing shock show that they ran uh, back in April. And so you have the clear-cut presence of fraud in these cases. And the judges in New Hampshire are not listening. And I overheard Larry Sumsky, the U.S. trustee in this state, turn, because I, I was doing videos on some cases before him in bankruptcy court. And instead of challenging the B-10 claim for proof of claim like some responsible uh, trustees are doing, he turned when he thought he didn't know who I was. And he said, it, she's got this cr some cohort out there on, the, on YouTube making movies. And I just looked at him and I said, yeah, that cohort is me. You know, I'm documenting the fact that you're not doing your job. So behind that backdrop now, I come to investigate Marie Miller's case. And before I went to law school, I was an investigative reporter for a daily. Anyway, this is 20-some years ago. But anyway, flash forward now. I come to investigate Marie Miller's case. 
I'm looking at a valid court order telling NationStar to produce the original note and mortgage three years ago. Have they done it? No. And I say, okay, if I don't produce something the court tells me to, to, to produce, guess what's going to happen to me? My case is going to get thrown out. I'm going to be held in contempt. I'm going to be fined. I'm going to be sanctioned. I'm out of there. Nation Star does nothing. And they're still in there. And she's still trying to figure out, this widow here is trying to figure out where she's going to live. So, you know, I had a bunch of things I was going to pull up to show you here. I, I have an ethics complaint I wrote against Judge Nicolosi about all that. Maybe I'll send it to you later. I didn't print it out for you. But I'll tell you, this can't go on like this. All right? We have to get it clear. And people have to have a right to understand, you know, what they're facing. Yes. It um, sounded like it was almost similar to this case. I just wanted to know exactly in a plain English. Well, what, what happened is uh, I had a uh, balloon mortgage on the house, <clears throat> and it was coming due, and I sent a letter to the bank asking them for some of these details on the, on the, uh, on the agreement I have with them, the mortgage and the note and that, and that stuff. And uh, their response was immediate, uh, what do they call it, when they accelerate the loan? They immediately accelerated the loan, refused to respond to my uh, requests, and started their foreclosure procedure. So uh, I was actually traveling when all this started to happen, so I was trying to do some things uh, during uh, correspondence because I worked for the U.S. Air Force down at Hanscom Air Force Base. So I was on the road. So, um, so I, they started the foreclosure process, so I tried to defend myself in the New Hampshire court in Milford. And... Uh, couldn't present anything, and I was just sitting there wondering, you know, how can a lawyer be uh, testifying for the bank, and and I'm sitting here as a victim of this thing, and I can't get my information into the court. I don't know why. They just not explain to you why. No, they no, they just didn't. Standing or something. No, I, and I challenged that, and uh, so uh, eventually, what happened is I would not leave my house. So one day while I was at work, they they came to the house with the Amherst police. And they brought a locksmith with them, and they went into the house, evacuated everybody, changed the locks on my door, and when I showed up on my property that night, I got a call saying that the police were at my house. I left work, I came right up there, and there was about nine Amherst cops there, and they told me they're going to arrest me if I try to cross my door. Um, and and uh, then I lost my appeal in the New Hampshire Supreme Court. They, they wouldn't even hear it. All right, we have to move on. Uh, okay. So we have a couple questions. Yes, thank you. Let's try to keep it as close as we can to relevant. Mr. Miller, I said you said in your opening statement that the judge would receive any of the documentations that you presented. Yeah, uh, yes. Do you have a name? Uh, I can get that for you. Uh, and did you know for it? Uh, it was Milford judge District Crawford. Court. Judge Crawford. Long as our guy proceeds. <laughs> Mr. King, we're at your mercy. <laughs> Quite charitable way to put it, but uh, yeah, Christopher King, and I'm here uh, as an individual who has been a licensed title insurance producer in this fine state, and as someone who's been an assistant attorney general in another fine state, uh, I now run a journal which is called mortgagemovies.blogspot.com. I fly about the country and I basically document instances of foreclosure abuse, and by foreclosure abuse, I mean instances where the bank has not proved standing, has not come close to proving standing by virtue of not having original wedding note or mortgage or anything like that to indicate that they are truly holder due course and entitled to foreclose. Now, all throughout the country, the trend that I've been seeing, states all over the country, we have uh, attorneys general in Arizona, we've got uh, U.S. trustees, bankruptcy trustees in a number of states and other attorneys general are coming out and judges in New York all over the place are holding go on like this. All right, we have to get it clear. And people have to have a right to understand, you know, what they're facing. It can't be just some, some nebulous company comes up and has manufactured documents and says, get out of your house. You know, we're sorry about the death of your husband, but, you know, you're out of here. It's time for us to flip the house and put our, our, our wealthy developer friends in it. No, I don't like that. So that's what she's facing. And I don't know what the issue is. I do know. And my research indicates that there's a lot of CAFRA accounts. There's a lot of, uh, basically what's going on is you have situations where the retirement accounts and pension accounts are held by the banks and managed by the banks who are doing the mortgage loans. And, you know, you have a lot of vested interest in, in mortgage-backed securities, which a lot of those are garbage in, garbage out anyway. 
All right, because a lot of the subprimes were tied into that. So it's a mess, but it's something that this committee needs to look into assiduously because it's only going to get worse if you don't take action. I don't, the judge clearly is acting outside the law. You know, under presentment, the rule of presentment, you know, they had a right. The, the RSA statute is in here. I had 382, I think it is, whatever. I'm sure you're familiar with it. But under that uh, 382A3501, uh, upon demand of the person to whom presented, presentment is made, the person making presentment must exhibit the instrument, give reasonable identification, uh, uh, authenticate all of the above. And none of that is happening in New Hampshire courts. Now, I see it happening. Uh, I've been to Wisconsin. I've seen some good luck there. I've seen bad luck in California. I, I forget how many states I've been in. But I've got to keep doing it because it fascinates me, this, this balkanization of the law throughout the U.S. And what's going to happen, I don't know, but I'm just encouraging you, that you all to take a look at this. And if she needs to be impeached for a clear-cut violation, you know, a standing court order and a violation of presentment, that she needs to be impeached. Now, I'm going to, you know, call a spade a spade. That's just the way it is. But all I know is this woman has to have some reassurances <clears throat> that she's going to get justice, and she hasn't got it so far. Thank you very much. Is there anybody with a question? Uh, Mr. Uh, the name of your your, your your organization that you're, you run? Oh, Mortgage Movies. Mortgage Movies. Is there a website? Yes, it's a blog spot. So it's mortgagemovies.blogspot.com. And as a matter of fact, the Marie Miller's case, I believe, is the top entry uh, right now. And it'll be supplemented with video and stills from today as well. Okay. And, mortgage uh, Movies blog. Mor mortgage Movies dot blog spot dot com. And then we had a state rep, Comerford, uh, spoke on the last movie with her that we did at the courthouse, which was another strange thing. We were told that the case was being dismissed by Nation, uh, by uh, Nation Star, Nation, Nation Star, Nation yeah. Star, yes. We were told it was being dismissed. We get there, review the file. There's a dismissal, right? But it doesn't say whether or not it's w with prejudice. So all she does, she writes a, a request for clarification. She says, is it, is it with prejudice or not? Well, as a result of this, allegedly, then she's now reopened the entire case. And it doesn't make any sense. You know, I, I practiced for about eight, nine years. And I'm like, how does that reopen the whole case? You just want clarification. So she's still doing this tightrope dance again every day. She has no security. She's raised a family. She's done all these things. She's in the twilight of her years. And here she is, strung out in this court system. It's not cool. Are there other questions? Representative Sorg, maybe a question for the chair. Do we have copies of the pleadings in the, in the litigation? <clears throat> do we have copies of the pleadings, uh, Representative Harkin? Do we have any uh, cover for it? I think we do. I, you have all the copies of the documents of Ms. Miller in the, the file. That exist, right? You do. Yeah, and they would be in here uh, and they're at your disposal. Including the court order? I'm sorry. I think we all did for them. Yeah. Uh, they're in there, okay. yes. Good. I think we do have them all. I think we individually have them all. Well. Uh, you have a question for the first hearing? Yes, yes. I just did. Were you here for the first hearing? I have a lot of documents. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Nation Star. Yeah, Nation Star. I'm just curious as if you uh, get up to speed, is there a the move for that? Is there a move for that? Is there a what happened here? It will, yeah, let's go back to it in a minute. If I review the file. Yeah, no, I don't think we can do it entirely. I think you're going to get it another stop in a second. Yeah. And Nation Star, by the way, I have a tracker. Nation Star reads my blog. It's not like they're unaware of any of this. <laughs> they're just like, okay, put it, we'll do whatever we want to do. Now you, you, one, one question for you is you, uh, you said the New Hampshire courts are doing this. There's obviously one judge who did the right thing, asked for the papers, right? And then, uh, correct. And then he's off the case. So, yeah. so, so without disparaging all the courts, it does, you do have a plural. You appear to have two cases, which is not So uh, I understand that. But I just of course. To ask, well, there wasn't any further clarification. Yeah. Representative, I think Corrigan is next. Right. Did, they, did they even make a pretense of, as far as you, to the best of your knowledge, did they try to present anything to prove that they were the owner of the course, or did they? Uh, I, I'm sure they presented something. Ms. Miller would have more of that background. I just focused on the fact that they were ordered to produce X and never produced X. Ms. Miller is here, and she does want to speak <coughs> at the end of this. Uh, Representative Funding. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. King, I, I don't know if you're representing uh, Ms. Miller in a legal no. capacity. No, I've been in 12 years. No, I'm just a journalist. Okay, so maybe you can give me some, some insight, or maybe uh, uh, Mrs. Miller will, but um, was there a, an, an actual bona fide lien against the property held by uh, NationStar as a mortgagee? Well, I, I wouldn't well, contend so because... Okay. Also, those uh, questions all for Ms. Yeah. I wouldn't contend so because we haven't seen any proof of, of ownership of the note or the, lo uh, uh, or the mortgage, so I would say no. Your questions need to be addressed to a journalist who probably knows everything secondhand, okay. so it. 
Representative Aylin. Thank you. Uh, sir, do you have any other cases by this particular company that, uh, that you're aware of, that, uh, of, of abuses uh, in this state? Not by Nation Star, no. Not by Nation Star. Okay. Outside this state? Outside this state? Uh, no, Nation, no. I have, a, I, have a, I have so many. I have to look at my calendar to see who's where and what state. But Nation Star is one. I think I only, this is the only case I believe that I'm researching with Nation Star. Maybe Mr. King, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do you know if the New Hampshire Banking Commission has been involved in this at all? I, I don't know, but while we're on that, while we're on that, Mrs. Miller's taking her head so well. Yes, that's good. Well, I'll, well, I'll, well, she'll come off later, but I'll let them yeah. respond at this point. Uh, yeah, just real, real, real briefly, I, I forgot to mention this. That this thing is like kind of an endemic, all right? From the top down. I've lived there, I've been a resident there for 10 years, <clears throat> and uh, the, the bank um, that I was dealing with. Uh, Bayview Loan Servicing, they foreclosed on my house in Amherst and they used a, uh, a shell company called IB Property Holdings to purchase the house back from themselves. So my first question to you is going to be, if the bank has standing and owns the house, if I default, supposedly, allegedly, then why do they need to have a shell company that they own buy the house back for themselves if they have legal title to it. I'm here to say that they didn't have legal title and I tried to uh, show that in the New Hampshire courts. I had a court case in the Milford District Court uh, <coughs> at that time and the judge refused to allow me to bring in the kind of documentation we're talking about in here and that documentation namely to show that they had no standing to bring in the note, to bring in the uh, the uh, mortgage documents and in fact when I did write to the bank to get that information they sent me back the mortgage contract with only my signature on it no signature of anyone else so where's the contract if there's no other signature except mine uh, the other thing is that I had already signed a note and if you look up uh, the, the um, information and in two documents in particular there was testimony given of, it's called an affidavit of Walker F. Todd in uh, Bank One versus Har Harshavard uh, Dave and Patrima Dave jointly and severally. That was a, a case in the state of Michigan. And the uh, Walker Todd was an official that did a forensic investigation on that in testimony. And he showed the step by step process of how the note and the mortgage are tied together as an instrument. And then they're separated, and the note is sold on the international market. Probably these mortgage securities we're talking about. And, and therefore, once those instruments are split, they have no, uh, they have no legal standing anymore as an instrument uh, to show holder in due course of that, of that uh, instrument. Um, <clears throat> also, at that time when all this was happening, I had informed the sheriffs of the fraud that was taking place. The sheriffs ignored me, the sheriffs of, uh, of Hillsborough County. And so uh, the court refused to allow me to bring those documents into the court to show standing, uh, and they overruled me, and so I took it to an appeal to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. Um, they would not respond to me until I paid the fee to have my case heard, and as soon as I paid the fee, they dismissed the case, and they didn't even give me a hearing uh, on my appeal. So I have a big beef with the New Hampshire courts that they would not even allow me to present my information that the fraud was committed against me. Um, one other part of the statement I want to make is that when the banks intentionally refuse to comply with federal and state laws requiring proof of the loan, they are intentionally committing felonies. And government officials have a responsibility when that's brought to their attention uh, to um, take the course of action to remedy this for we the people. That's what we're asking uh, when you put up your oath of office in, in an office, in a government uh, office, we're counting on you to back us up. To protect us that's what all these government offices are here to, for the people and we pay for that um, without proof of the loan there is no proof of the debt so what do you need for proof of, proof of the loan well through the Truth and Lending Act through the Consumer Protection Act and through the Fair Debt Collection Act uh, Fair Debt uh, Collections Act they're supposed when you demand to see um, uh, their proof of ownership of the of the funds the source of the funds and the transfer of the funds, if they cannot give you that information, they have no legal title to, uh, to their claim. They have no, no claim at all. And 
uh, when we ask the banks these things, they are ignoring us, and then when we bring that to the attention of the courts, they ignore us. They will not allow us to bring that information to the court. That's my personal experience here in New Hampshire. Also, uh, there are some people that have already done some work in Washington and California where they have tied the retirement investments uh, for judges uh, with mortgage-backed securities and other bank procedures and uh, there's been three judges that have already disqualified themselves out there in Washington and California because they've been tied to, uh, to the retirement funds that when they support the banks on the mortgages, on the foreclosures, they're, they're uh, having... Since I already told you everything there was to know, right? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> So, well, I really don't have much to say anymore. I will give you now an affidavit of truth with all my people supporting me on that with signatures. And if Mr. Tim Comfort could make a copy of it, so I have one copy and you can keep one original and then Maybe you would be so kind and make copies. That would be just fine. We'd be very pleased to have that. Yeah. yeah. Is that, uh, you want to give us that today? Yes. Yes, in mind? just a few minutes. No, I, I, I thought I just made uh, copies. You didn't have enough? No, we didn't I, notarize it yet. I want to give you the original oh, okay. notarized copy of okay. that. That's, okay. that's what was going on before. All right. So you're all set. All, yes. all right. Any questions for this? Yeah, any questions for Ms. Miller? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Ms. Miller, for coming out. Thank you. I appreciate your testimony. Um, was there a mortgage on the property to Nation Star? No, it was to Centex of of Tempe, Arizona. Tempe, Arizona. Centex of Tempe, Arizona. Arizona. Okay, and is this company solo? Yeah, go ahead. Is there some correlation, do you know, between Nation Star and the Centrex Bank? Or? They claim to be a sister company. Sister company. Yes. And they sent me a loan modification agreement, um. which I welcomed because I could pay them again, be in good standing, be in my house, and be happy. <coughs> I sent them the loan modification agreement and they, I got the green card back from the registered mail that they received it. They turned around, they asked me to, to send them right away the first payment of the 21st of March in 08. I sent the payment by Western Union, I sent them the modification agreement send them two more checks every month, so for three months I would be paid, and they sent me back my checks, and the 30th of April of 08, they put a note on my house that it's been sold to a new owner to vacate the property. We can give you more background. That's fine. Yeah. Well, this is something that was there during the Thank you very much. Yes, and the banking commission was involved and so was the attorney general. I went to them, to the banking commission. Tell me about it. The court are yeah. Okay. The Supreme Court oh, wants me to open up a new case, but this is all included in my affidavit. Representative Hargan has a question. In the documentation, did they present, to meet the presentment law? Did they make any pretense of presenting anything? Or what did they? I cannot well, understand. Well, what did they actually... In, they didn't produce the original documentation showing they were the owner. Of the Never. Did they, did they produce anything at all? That no. Reported to be no. It, it was really a choke in court, in superior court. It was a choke. They never produced anything. Did you show the judge that she needed to produce? That the first judge had said. Yes. As for the document. Judge Brown ordered that they produce the original note. You made it clear to the second. You made clear and to the second judge. Judge Brown had that in front of her because I pointed it out to her and she went against the court order of Judge Brown, which is totally against the law. The question I had was how did the case get from one court to the next?
when I was a title insurance producer back in 03, when all this mess was starting, someone forced my name to a mortgage. I was with a bunch of Barracudas in my, the company that, that I opened for these people. And they wanted to put their, their woman in now that I had it up and running. So they, bring, they double booked me and all this stuff. And basically, they forced my name to a mortgage. I complained to Kelly A. out about it when she was AG. And I said, hey, Kelly, you know, hey, I'm a former AG, uh, assistant AG from another state. You know, here's this, this, this happened to me, okay? And I wrote National Police Department, all this stuff, right? Do you know it's eight years later, and I'm seeing her on the campaign trail. I'm asking her, when is somebody going to investigate the forgery of my name to that mortgage? Nothing. You know, National Police, nothing. It's just like it just falls into this black abyss of justice or injustice.